Hello, it's me again, and we're here for part two. In part two, I'm going to be teaching you the basics of animation. Uh, so it's not going to be a poster, it's going to be a very, very small clip. It's going to be someone or some character picking up an object from a table. Uh, so we're going to learn the basics of getting models into the game that isn't directly through characters. Uh, we're going to be learning how to parent objects to characters or other objects. And we're going to be learning how keyframes uh, allow us to create animation. Uh, so if you haven't watched the first part, I really recommend you do first, because otherwise you're probably going to get a little bit lost. Um, but if you manage to, you could, in theory, follow along with what I'm doing uh, without that knowledge. But I would highly recommend you do watch the first one. Uh, it's not going to teach you how to make good animation. That's an entirely different subject, which I am not qualified to teach you. So with that being said, let's get started. So like before, we got in, we launched Dota, we set the session map, we have created a camera, we've put it in a spot. That's all in the first session. We will now create a new model. We're going to have a table. So we're going to get the anti-mage debut floor table. And it's pretty small. But let's put it to the ground here. So how do we make a table bigger or a model bigger? We can right click the model on the animation set editor utilities and where is it add scale control to models so if you click on it here we can see we've got root transform scale and if we click and drag that to the right we can make it bigger so let's put it to about here a very very large table um, this also applies to making stuff smaller and yeah it's just scaling. That's how it works. Uh, we're going to create a sword. So we want the Dragon Knight Persona sword because that's what I'm going to be using. So we search DK Persona. Uh, some heroes are going to be under weird names and some models you're just going to have to kind of guess uh, how they work because otherwise you're going to have to look through this model browser all the time, all the way through. And that's not fun. So just putting in the search bar here what you want to search for. It's it's a guess like if you want to search for rocks you'll search for rocks and if you want to search for like a wall you search for a wall uh, but a lot of the creativity comes from being able to use objects uh, in different ways than they're intended to so instead of having a wall you could have the back of a house or something like that um, but let's get the weapon so we have the weapon we click it here rotate and press E and rotate it press W click shift put it onto the table now we can rotate it and move it here and lift it up just a bit so it doesn't clip through it. Okay, we have the sword, we have the table, we need the character. So, right click, create animation set for new model, not character this time. We're going to search for DK Persona and we're going to find his base model. So his base model is very, well, it's, it is the base model. Uh, you attach things to it, like his armor and hair, which we're going to do now. So, we right-click in here again, new model, DK Persona, DK Persona shoulder pauldrons. The alternative way of doing this is you right-click the DK Persona base, uh, we do add item set and do stock item set. And that gets all of them in the same place, but we don't want to use all of these. And because it creates a sword down there, although it should, where is it? I don't think it's on the floor in the correct spot. There we go. Oh, there we are. Quite laggy, I'm not sure why that is. Uh, but there's the sword, and we don't want that. So let's undo that, and let's select some and lift them up a bit. There we are. So, how do we get the armor onto him? The first thing we do is we click and drag the DK Persona base onto DK Persona shoulder pauldrons. We have the object that we want to be the parent, that's what we click first. And then what we want to attach to the parent is what we drag it onto. And you'll see that a lock appears on the right here. That means they're attached. So if I move the Dragonite Persona base, it moves the armor alongside him. And if I attach a rig, and move a foot. You can see it, it's glitchy, but it does move along with it. Uh, so the way to stop that and the way to make sure that it's in the right spot, we click DK Persona shoulder pauldrons, 
And on this slider here where it says zero, we drag that all the way to the right. Now, once that's attached, we don't want to be able to select any of the bones that are on the model itself. So we click this little cursor icon here, and that means all of the nodes and the bones are no longer clickable when you're using the uh, viewport. So if I click here, that's just gonna be the DK foot, DK foot, and then we can lift that and the armor moves with it. Perfect. Still need to add his hair, but it's the same principle. Right click, new model, DK persona, hair, click drag the base onto the hair, and then zero it all the way to the right, and then cursor. Beautiful. So, I'm gonna move the Dragon Knight so he's in a bit of a better position, like so. Let's do it like that. Then we're gonna move the camera so it's about here. Doesn't need to be perfect, just enough to show what's going on. And then, okay, this is specific to the DK persona, so if you're using a different character and different models here, ignore this part. Um, or you, you could glean something useful of it. And I will also say don't do this if you're doing it in a professional environment, because uh, it will. there is potential for stuff to screw up here, um, and it should only be done when you kind of know how something's going to be moving, or if it's not going to be moving. But anyway, so a problem with the DK persona is if I select the hand here, and rotate it like this, you can see the arm blade clipping through uh, the armor itself. And to be honest, we don't need the arm blade at all. So what I want to do is I want to get rid of it. Uh, so we're going to, what we can do is we can select it here, but there's a lot of nodes in the same place and we don't really want to be dealing with that. So we click the plus here to get unknown because it's not any, of the, any part of the rig. Uh, so it's an unknown. Find wrist blade arm zero, the origin of the wrist blade. Okay, repeating, do not do this in a professional environment. It's really bad, but I'm doing it just for the sake of getting it out of the way. We can we just drag it down off the map. The reason why you don't do this in a professional environment is because if I get the arm again, we can use this. Uh, it's the left hand. And then if we rotate it, you should be able to see it. There we go. You can still see it's attached to the arm but it's just off the camera, so we don't need to worry about it. Since we're not going to be using this arm a lot, we can do that, and it's not so bad, but uh, try to avoid it if you can. Um, so we're going to put the arm here. We're going to rotate it just so his hand looks a bit more natural, and we'll do the same here. We're getting the starting pose for the Dragon Knight. Okay. So we have a starting pose. We have a table. We've got the sword. Got the camera set up. We haven't done the sky, might as well do that. Uh, add new skybox just like last time. Add it in. I'm going to click and drag it up here so it's out of the way. Uh, and then there we are. We can start with the animation. Actually, I'm just going to move the camera a tiny bit. There we go. So everything's set up just like a poster beforehand. This is where we move into the graph editor. And the first thing we're going to do is we're going to use this hand icon here to pan so we can see the playhead at the start, zoom in with the scroll wheel until we get these little tenths of seconds, because that's the, what we're going to be working in. We're going to be working in tenths of seconds. Uh, we can go even further, but only if you need to. We're, right now, we're just going to leave it here. So now we've got that, we're going to click the DK Persona base, and we're going to press M, M for Magnus. And that means we have a keyframe at zero seconds and it's going to have all of his bones and nodes saying this is the position that he is in at this time so if i move it to if I move the playhead to one second put a playhead here and then move him oh this is a thing if you select every bone at once and move him or move like this in the clip editor he will stretch <laughs> it's funny but you don't want it generally. So if you want to move the whole model in the uh, in the graph editor, sorry, uh, then you're going to have to select the root, which is in body, root transform. And then if we move him over here and put the playhead back to the start, 
press space to play the video or we can press to play here that'll send it back to the start that'll send it to the end that is i believe yep first frame and then we can go frame by frame as well that is animation that's all it is really um obviously you just you don't want to do that with the root bone you want to have it with arms you want to have it with legs you want to move all of the stuff at the same time or like at different times you know all of them together um, so what we're going to do is we're going to click DK Persona Base and we're going to get rid of that keyframe. And he's, now he's back to the start. No movement whatsoever. So what we're going to do is we're going to have him reach out and grab the sword with his hand. So we're going to select the hand and at 0 0.5 seconds, move the playhead here. And then we're going to move his hand into a position where he can grab the sword. Like so. If I move the hand too far away from his body, you'll see that the gizmo starts moving, but his hand doesn't. This is where the rig comes in, because it's saying, hey, you're moving his hand too far, I can't go that far. So, what's the solution? We move the body. So if we take the pelvis, and the playhead is zero, still at 0 0.5, we can rotate it, and then once you see the elbow start to move, that means it's reached the gizmo. So we're gonna have it here. In fact, we're going to move the hand a little bit further back because we don't need to go that far. We're going to go here. So you can see it's like roughly in his hand. If you want to get, like, as you get close to a model, you'll notice it gets dark. This is because of uh, ambient occlusion, which we can temporarily turn off by right clicking the viewport, render settings, and turning it off there. So now if we get close, we don't get blinded. It's not quite as nice to look at, but it's still fine for what you're working with. And you can turn it back on whenever you want. So, we're at 0 0.5 seconds, we'll go back to the start and watch him there. That simple. But now we need to have him grab the sword and pull it. So, what we're going to do is we're going to select his fingers. We're going to select one here and scroll down to where we're highlighted. You can see that we have fingers and right fingers. Since we're going to be adjusting all of the bones of all of the fingers, we're going to select them all here by clicking the right fingers. And we're going to put a keyframe at, let's say here, 0. Point, well, at 10 frames in. You can see that's the number of frames, that's the number of seconds. We're working with 24 frames per second, or at least I'm working with 24 frames per second. If you're working with 60, that's going to be a different number. So press M, and that means all of these fingers have a keyframe here. So this is, we're not going to move the fingers at frame 10, but at frame 0. 0.5, frame 12, uh, we're going to have movements here. So select all the fingers again, press M at 0 0.5, and then we're going to adjust these by rotating the fingers around the sword. So the first one, that's the first joint of the finger, we're going to have it about here. Actually, we're going to rotate it like this. And then we'll do the second bit, and then the third bit. I'm going to do the same with the middle finger. Doesn't have to be perfect. Art is a process and it takes time, but you can put as much effort or as little effort in as you want. This isn't going to look perfectly natural because most people don't hold things this way. Uh, but again, it doesn't matter. It's your first time. And I'm teaching something very quickly. So keep doing this with all the fingers until you get roughly what you want. Like so. And then we can move the thumb a little bit as well. Move that like that. You can do a freeform or you can do it along single axes, it's up to you. It's not the perfect looking fist, but it'll do. In fact, that's a bit much. Let's move it a bit like this. And we'll move this finger here. There we are, that's fine. So, if we zoom in here and move back and forth between these, you'll see that he's picking it up now. And if we go to zero seconds and play, really what you would want is to have the hand not go straight through the sword here. Uh, the way to avoid that is at 0 0.4 seconds, let's say, uh, have the hand, in fact, no, a little bit earlier. Let's have it at 0. Point here, frame seven, 
just before 0 0.3. We're going to move it over here. We don't want the, you can see the elbow locking here. We don't want it to lock. So I'll have it like this. Maybe here. Yeah, okay. So what this means is the hand will go from here, a normal, to here, to here. Again, it's not perfect, but it doesn't need to be. So it's a bit janky. So what we're going to do is we're going to smooth the tangents out here because you can see the motion. Each of these lines is a position and rotation of the bone that you're looking at. So if we double click uh, this here, so it's reset, you can see that the graph itself is not smooth. Uh, this is just the way that the source film maker interpolates uh, movement. So we're going to select these splines. And there's these icons here will give you different uh, spline tangents uh, or different tangents. I don't know the technical term, but different um, different paths of motion. So if we click the first one, that's going to be really robotic, very straight, no smoothing, very bad. Well, there are times and places for it, but it's not for human motion, let's say. Flat tangents, you can see it's pretty smooth. And then we've got spline tangents, which is even smoother generally. I think spline generally looks the best. It's going to be up to you, and it will depend on the situation and what you're animating. So to play around with it a little bit, it will only affect the spline or the keyframes that you select. So if I had a bunch of keyframes and I only did like this one, if I selected this one and did spline or flat, it's not going to affect this path here. It will only affect the things that you're selecting. So if I select this one and this one, it will still affect all of them because these lines are selected. So now we've got that, we want him to pull his hand back with the sword in it. So at 0 0.5, we're going to first of all close the right fingers because that takes up a lot of space. We're going to press the plus on the weapon and we're going to find weapon zero in the unknown folder. And just like we did with the armor, the uh, the hand is the base, so we're going to find hand R and drag it onto weapon zero. So now, if we move the playhead to one second and then move the hand backwards, you can see that the sword moves with it. Because we've got... Um, we do actually have a little bit of animation here. So what we're going to do is we're going to put a keyframe here and a keyframe here, and then we're going to click the first one just to flatten it out. In fact, hold on, let's undo this. We're going to have a keyframe at 0 0.5 for the sword, for the weapon zero, and we might as well at zero. And then here, we're going to click the hand, drag it onto the weapon. So now we have that. One second, if we've got the hand selected, which we do, drag it back. Simple. You can see in the corner here how it looks, or I can put it back to camera two. And that is the basics of animation. Everything else is just moving other parts at the same time. So if I want him to bend down with the a little bit further, we can say at like zero point of at frame eight, he's going to be starting to bend down. And at frame fourteen, he's going to finish bending down. At frame fourteen, you put the bend down there. In fact, if we double click this again, we can see that that's a straight line, and we don't really want that. We want it to be nice and smooth. So we select these two and do spline just like before. There we go. It is that simple. Everything from there, like I said, is just combining everything you've learned already. So, once we've got something we're reasonably happy with, it's very simple, but it doesn't need to be complicated. We're going to click on the clip editor. In fact, no, hold on, we're going to take a note of when the last keyframe is. So let's just select DK because that's the only place where motion is. It's one second in, so that's his last motion. So the keyframe of the playhead continues between these. So on our clip editor, 
we press shift B. Now we have one shot and two shots. So this is shot one. Uh, we're going to press space and it works. If we do control space, it will play to the end and then go back to the start. Uh, there is a button next to what looks like a volume thing, which I can't show you right now because my webcam is over it, but it says play once. Uh, if you if you hover over it, if you click it, it will turn into repeat. So do control space and you can watch it loop. Okay, so when you want to, um, I should say when you want to uh, untether or unparent or unattach something from the thing or from whatever it's attached to rather, I should say. Uh, you right click the DK Persona weapon or whatever is attached to it. It's got the lock symbol, you'll see it. Uh, then you right click it and... Where is it? Unlock transforms. And then the lock goes away. And then if I move the hand, it doesn't move the sword. And all the stuff is still saved. So any changes you did while it was attached, the motion is still there because it's saved into the keyframes. So, in fact, while I have the DK, uh, actually let's do it with just the hand. So that was hand right. You can see that we've got a very straight line here. If we select these two, just do spline. There we are. Because I unattached it, it the sword is still doing the old uh, animation, where the, the movement was very robotic. So if I undid, um, if I didn't unlock the transforms uh, and then did the spline, it would be moving with it, but we just got a little bit of adjustment wrong here. But that's fine. Again, doesn't need to be perfect. So once that's done and you're happy with it, uh, first of all, let's put the ambient occlusion back on. Then we go to File, Export, Movie, Save. So. This is where it gets a little weird, uh, because ideally you will want to have it in an image sequence, because sometimes when Source Filmmaker renders something, uh, the audio is slightly out of sync with how you had it here. But since we're not using audio, we're going to just have it as a movie. We we'll have it as an MP4. We can have it as whatever you like. Save it wherever you want. Choose the resolution. Uh, you can do quick choices here. And for the, this is the important bit. Duration, sequence, change that to selected shots. So any shots you had selected in the clip editor, which is shot one, uh, that will only render these shots. Or we can just say, since we're only on, uh, if you do custom, it's only one second in, we can also just do that. So zero to one seconds. But we're gonna do selected shots. We don't need audio, so you can untake that. Under more options, uh, depth of field, we're not using that, so we can untick it. Motion blur, the higher the number is, the better the motion blur will look, but the longer it will take to render. Uh, for now, we're just going to use the camera settings because it's not important. Ambient occlusion, you can turn on or off. I'm going to keep it on. And then you export the movie. I'm not going to export this one because it will take a lot of time. But once you've done that, it'll be in the location you saved here. And yeah, now you know how to animate in Source Filmmaker, or at least the very basics. So hopefully you can enjoy yourself and I'll see your posts on the Dota 2 subreddit or on your YouTube channel. Do send me stuff you make because I am very eager to see what you come up with. So thank you for watching and I'll see you for part three.